Hello, I had the pleasure of presenting this at CRT 2023, and I would like to represent this for our online group here. So today I'm going to talk about understanding valve map and major needs. Here are my disclosures. We know that there are over 50 shades of map because everyone has different types and distribution. And you can see that here. And so the management options can be different. The number of challenges with TMBL and MAC, the etiology are quite heterogeneous. That's microstenosis, that's regurgitation or mixed. The NLI can be small or eccentric and is non-conforming because it's rigid due to the calcium. The LVOT cavity uh, obstruction risk can be significant because the LV cavity can be small. And finally, there's potential interference of the MAC with the TMBL devices. So it can affect device fixation, anchoring, deformation, and even paraviral leak. This is a nice track imaging paper showing how to work up patients for TMBL. And you can see that here, in terms of all the anatomical criteria, both echo and CT are critical and now emerging computation and modeling and simulation is also very helpful. So there are three key imaging modalities in TMBL. There's the TEE, which allows you the pre-assessment and guiding the procedure. There's CT for pre-assessment. And finally, fluoroscopy during the procedure to help orient the device and steering in conjunction with echo. Now here's an example of an echo evaluation. Obviously, you're going to be doing a bicommissural view. Uh, with biplane to LVOT, you can see that here very well, quantifying the MR and of course the 3D on force as well. You can see, however, there's some challenges actually determining the MS severity uh, and also MR severity in MAC for these reasons. You can see that this Jack paper here showing some of the challenges involving uh, planimetering the valve area, pressure half time, determining the gradient, a continuous equation, and of course, uh, calculating the mean pressure uh, gradient as well. And so they proposed a severe mitral sten uh, st valve dysfunction in the presence of mapping valve area for stenosis less than 1.5 centimeters square, high gradient 8 to 10, and at least uh, greater moderate uh, mitral vegetation. CT, of course, is the gold standard in evaluating the anatomic feasibility for valve map. You can see that here, it's not just the dimensions, but also aortic mitral angle, in terms of the valve geometry and shape, uh, how severe the MAC is, what shape and size, what's the maximum width or height, in terms of how compliant and conformable that might be. And you can see that uh, nice Jack intervention review here, looking at key landing zone considerations. It's not just anatomic. You can see that there's physiologic consideration in terms of LVEF, hypertrophy, and of course, procedural consideration for LVOT obstruction, including in terms of any kind of other uh, adjunctive procedures might be needed. Mark Guerrero and her group had come up with a max score for balloon expandable valve in terms of adequacy for anchoring. You can see that the higher the max score, the better it is in terms of anchoring and to avoid the risk of embolization and migration. And you can see that here, if you have severe MAP, you're less likely to have migration uh, with the balloon expandable device. In terms of LVOT obstruction risk, you can see that here, uh, the narrow aortic mitral angle, prominent septal hypertrophy. You can see if your anterior leaflet is long, kind of uh, occluding the outflow, protruding of the valve into the LBOT uh, in the ventricle, and also you have a short anterior posterior diameter because then the valve may elongate uh, into the ventricular cavity and causing obstruction at the septal hypertrophy segment. In terms of the anatomic risk, you can see the left side, the small ventricle, asymmetric hypertrophy, uh, where acute aortic mitral angle, long leaflet, and of course, device design. In terms of physiologically, we typically define the LBOT peak gradient gradient 10 from baseline, uh, the peak gradient over 30, uh, with hemodynamic significant over 50, and the LBOT of area of less than 1.7 to 1.9. Now, with the balloon expander valve, you can see the open cells in the top. So if you have leaflet management strategy that can uh, split the leaflets or do other means, you can potentially open up the neo LV team up more by exposing the open cells in the outflow tract. So that's certainly a consideration to improve the neo LVOT. And of course, there are more other recent techniques and strategies to do that as well. And you can see this is an example of an LVOT management algorithm with a balloon expandable valve. If you have neo LVOT less than 200, 
uh, then you need to see if the skirt neuropathy is less than 180, as I mentioned before. And if it's not, then you better need to do some kind of leaflet management strategy. Uh, if you uh, can, then you need to think about surgery uh, as an option. Now, we have also discovered that multi-phase evaluation can be very helpful. What that means is that at end systole, there's really no cardiac output from the heart. So really the anatomic new LBOT calculation may not be physiologically as relevant. So people now routinely calculate 10 to 40% in the cross the entire systolic cycle to determine if the new LBOT obstruction can occur even in early to mid systole that can certainly affect uh, the, the anatomic feasibility. And you can see that here, this is again, Marco Rell's group looking at the valve in MAC registry. And you can see that it's not just the neo LVOT area, but the average, the index, percentage reduction, and the valve to septal distance all matter in terms of assessing LVOT obstruction risk with the balloon expandable valve. And you can see that here, 3D modeling and virtual modeling can be very helpful to determine how the MAC will behave, how the valve will expand. And you can see that how the new LVOT uh, may result based on the implant depth. 3D printing has also been highly valuable in terms of pre-case plan looking at how constrained the valve may be. Are there any risk of paravalve leak or expansion or cardiac injury? However, there are a number of factors, confounding factors impacting new LVOT clearance that we still don't know or, or don't know how to predict. So for example, the final position, we just can't predict that unless you do a sensitivity analysis. So if, if you have anterior tilt of the device, if you have anterior displacement or more ventricular deployment, all those can actually increase the LVOT obstruction risk uh, and overestimate your new LVOT area. The final valve geometry is also under, uh, predictable. It's going to be elongated. Is the valve going to be foreshortened enough? Uh, all those we just don't know until actually implant the valve and even 3D printing modeling is limited because the tissue is just not the same. And then the question is, what is the real cutoff uh, to avoid LVOT uh, hemodynamic obstruction and significant gradient? Is it patient specific or is there a general range that we can go by all the patients? And finally, what is the highest tolerable gradient uh, that can be achieved uh, without causing hemodynamic collapse? Again, we really don't have the answer to that. So let me give you an example of this case, a 67 year old with radiation heart disease, severe MAP with MS and MR. You can see the map here. We, this is the intrepid device uh, that is being in part of the Apollo trial. You can see that here. And you can see that the new LVOT is quite uh, at, you know, borderline. In fact, it's only around over 160 uh, centimeters square with the ancestry at 100, uh, near 120. So there's certainly a concern about LVOT obstruction. However, at that time, the screening criteria was uh, different. So we actually treated this patient. You can see that here actually went very well, but you can see the fluoroscopy in the bottom left corner that the inner valve is actually quite ovalized. And you can see that also in a post CT that the AP dimension is only around 23 millimeters, despite the inner valve should be at least 27, 28. You also will notice that the modeling uh, prediction is quite different. You can see that the top is how we model the LVOT obstruction you can see the valve, it looks approximately very close to the uh, ventricular septum. However, you can see the bottom, actually the space is larger than anticipated because the valve is actually constrained in the AP dimension. However, if you see that the valve actually elongates more into the ventricular cavity. So even though that cut plane here, you can see if the dash yellow line uh, does not suggest LVOT obstruction, the LVOT obstruction, may in fact happen further down into the ventricular cavity. You can see that here where the outflow of the device ends. So this is certainly something to consider. And you can see that here, uh, again, we don't know how to predict this accurately because clearly you can see the initial neo LVOT was gonna be around 140. And now you can see that it's actually almost 500, much, much bigger than expected. Of course, in terms of just other than LVOT assessment, anatomically, you have to determine as access approach, and there's some of the indications and limitations here in this review article. In summary, I would say echo and CT are key to evaluation of MAC uh, treatment options. I think in surgical candidates, certainly based on MAC severity and analyst size, you can determine whether you can do a conventional mitral valve replacement or you can do a hybrid approach with a direct balloon expandable valve implantation. In terms of percutaneous TMBL, it really has been limited by the ability to anchor, particularly with the balloon expandable valve, adequate sizing LVOT obstruction risk. 
We know that LVOT modeling still remains inadequate. The CT analysis are static. It does not reflect the actual anatomy after implant. And of course, we mentioned that procedural factors can also impact the final neural LVOT clearance. 3D printing and modeling, I think, can better simulate the actual implant, but remain resource intensive and it has its own inherent limitations. So I'd like to thank you very much for your attention.